And what is up guys, Technicals here coming at you with something a little bit different today. We're revisiting the FPGA. Now, if you've been following this saga, you know uh, kind of what happened. Uh, while we still don't have firm detail, highly technical detail on what it is that happened to my VCU 1525, uh, I was very, uh, very lucky to have someone who offered to uh, take a look at it, troubleshoot it, and eventually swap it out. GPU Hoarder over in the FPGA Discord. He's the man behind Squirrel Research. And the BCU 1525 offered to take a look at it. And he, uh, I'm going to post the uh, the detail here on the screen for you to look at. Uh, something to do with the VRM. Something fried in the card. Now, I can't uh, say for certain, and I haven't seen any information from him as to what may have caused this, if it was something on my end if it was a static discharge or if it was something to do with the water block because a lot of people have been uh, sort of talking about the back plate on that tool water block being uh, not manufactured to uh, to very tight tolerances and maybe something touched I just don't know um, the card again uh, just to reiterate I wasn't running the card for at least a good month when I got the water block I put it on right away without firing the card up first and so uh, it's tough to say whether or not the problem happened somewhere between uh, getting the water block or if it happened as a result of installing the water block we just don't know however GPU hoarder was very very kind and offered to replace it with a BCU so I got my hands on a BCU here a few days ago I fired it up and uh, was doing some testing now the BCU comes with a passive cooler that means no fan it's just a heat sink on it and it's up to you to figure out how to cool that off and now I've seen here and there some people running with just the passive cooler but it's become very apparent to me that uh, the BCUs, the VCUs, all of them, um, if you get one of these cards, you're going to have to do something about cooling. These things are not going to operate to uh, to the levels which you're uh, which you can achieve with just the stock cooling or even uh, forced air cooling over the stock heatsink. You've got to explore other options. Uh, in my determination to best uh, analogize this, it would be like buying a car without a radiator. The car is going to crank up and the car is going to go a little ways. But you're not going to get very far, and you're not going to be able to uh, to get the max performance out of the car either. You've got to do something with the cooling. So we've got new water blocks here coming out from other players like Dynas Tech. Uh, I've been speaking with them. Hopefully, I can get a review sample there. I know that uh, GPU Hoarder is uh, should be receiving a, 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 a sample from Dynas Tech for their block to make sure that it all matches up and there's no issues there. Uh, I've still got the tool water block. And so what I'll be doing here in the coming days is attaching the tool water block to the BCU as carefully as I possibly can with the stock back plate. And then I'll be forcing water through it, coolant through it with this. Yes, I bought yet another cooling setup. This one's from Coolants. Uh, this one comes highly recommended. This is a very high end cooler. And so I got uh, some quick connects and lots of things to where I can swap it out if I need to. And so we're going to be hooking that up here in the coming days. Uh, until then, I did want to experiment a little bit with cooling the card instead of just running the passive cooling. And so I'm going to take you through a little bit of what I did to uh, create a makeshift force air wind tunnel type thing using an old ASIC housing. All right, guys. So the plan here is to take the BCU 1525 with its stock passive cooler and force air through it. Now when I first got it what I did was I hooked up a 120 millimeter fan, one of these AC Infinity 150 CFM fans just pointed in the general direction of the card. That did virtually nothing to bring the temperatures down. I needed a way to force air through it just like we did with the previous VCU testing where we were forcing air through it. Uh, the idea being that if we force the air through a tiny space that can move a large volume of air over that heat sink and hopefully bring the temperatures down. So I thought what do I have to make a makeshift wind tunnel. Hey, I'll just use one of these other mining devices uh, for the wind tunnel because the L3 pluses are out of service. I'm not using them anymore because they are tremendously unprofitable. So what I did was I just broke it down and sort of rigged it up in order to accept the BCU 1525. What I did was I just completely disassembled it and put a squirrel riser in the center of it, measured it out to the best of my ability to kind of get an idea as to uh, as some, some extra space uh, to allow the air to condense down into a fine point. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and took some plastic uh, bars that are used for a portable AC unit window housing and cut those to spec, cut those to size, put them in, and that would uh, direct the air into one centralized spot right in the middle. So I'm forcing 150 CFM worth of air into a space of about, say, one inch by three to four inches. So I'm reducing it down, moving all the air through the BCU. Well, that's all well and good technicals, but what does it all mean? Did you get results out of it? If you take a look here, uh, this is a private bitstream. Yeah, I know. I finally got one. Not released to the public, and I'm uh, gagged from talking about it. So 
Very exciting stuff. I like having things that no one else has. Uh, the results, uh, they weren't great. They didn't work. Uh, it's not worthwhile. It's not worth doing. Uh, the, the temperatures that I got on the VCU with the stock reference style fan, uh, that little round one on the end that blew everything through, were much better. Uh, but still, on the VCU, temperatures were going up to 90C. And when I hit 90C, that's when I shut it off uh, because I'm not going to let it go any higher. Because if it's going to get all the way to 90C, then it's probably going to go even higher. Now, again, I did not undervolt the card. I got the undervolt dongle. I got the one that I made. I got the one that I bought bought from someone who knew what they were doing because uh, it was questionable as to whether or not uh, my soldering job was sufficient. Uh, so I have both of them and I should undervolt the card, uh, but I was just running a stock configuration here because again, a lot of you guys when you're getting FPGAs, you probably aren't getting the undervolt dongle. You're probably just getting the card and so uh, I'm just kind of going through the process. I will undervolt it, uh, but even with the undervolt, I'm not too sure how great of a result I'm going to get because uh, the, the overall time it took for the card to ramp up to 90C was uh, maybe offset only by, say, 20 seconds, uh, having the, the forced air blown through it versus just a fan blowing on it with no uh, nothing sort of directing the air in. So uh, I don't want to discourage you guys from getting FPGAs. And I hear that over and over again when I put out these videos, that I put sort of a negative spin on it. And I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to make these things undesirable or scary, but you know, I don't want to fluff them up as some kind of super easy push button turnkey user friendly type of uh, piece of equipment because they are not. They are very complex. Um, so, I, you know, I wouldn't be over overly discouraged about getting an FPGA because from what I've seen at this point, the private bit streams that are coming out, the release schedule for the algorithms that are uh, that are coming out here in the next two, three months and the ones in the next six months. Um, I definitely see FPGAs or people with a lot of FPGAs being able to absolutely kill it uh, because it seems to me that if an FP, if a bit streams out for an FPGA, then that would indicate that ASICs are probably right around the corner. FPGAs have a unique benefit in that um, they can get on an algorithm sort of under the radar before the uh, before the, the the coin developers, the team, is able to really say, oh my god, there's an ASIC on our system, let's fork away. FPGA is the bitstream's created, and if you get your hands on it, then you're able to uh, hash at an extreme rate. Uh, for an example, the private bitstream that I've been running the tests on is for a semi-popular coin, which is doing uh, roughly the equivalent, if I recall correctly, 20 to 21 1080 Ti's worth equivalent of hash rate on this algorithm. And so that's a lot. That's uh, that's quite a lot. And if you're running that every single day, if you get on the algorithm before anybody else really does, then you're going to be able to ROI on your FPGA in spades because you're going to be able to hop algo to algo. Remember, these are not ASICs. Once you program a, a, an FPGA, you can program it to something else at the drop of a hat. With an ASIC, you can't do that. Once you get an ASIC, it's set. It's stuck. You can uh, you can only stay on the algorithm that it's on. And if the chief coin or whatever you're mining forks away, then you're kind of out of luck unless you mine the smaller coins, which is what everybody else with the ASIC is going to be doing. FPGAs offer you a very unique uh, benefit and uh, allow you to strategize that much better. If you're interested in FPGAs, if you're thinking that you might want to get your hands on one, uh, understand that they're they're complex. Understand that they're in a perpetual state of development. Understand there's going to be corks and bugs, and there's not going to be a massive support structure out there to help you along the way. But also understand that these, again, in my view, are like reprogrammable ASICs. You're going to get an extreme amount of hash power, just a ton of power to throw on these algorithms as soon as the bit streams and miners come out. Uh, and it's going to allow you to uh, to, to redirect uh, at, at the at a moment's notice, at the drop of a hat. That's something that GPUs can do. So you're getting a, a good mix, an in between between GPUs and ASICs. And I think that they are well suited, well poised to take over as the enthusiast or advanced hobbyist level uh, mining equipment, proof of work mining pr equipment for the foreseeable future. Again, just to address the people who are saying like, oh, you put a negative spin on it, you scare me away from FPGAs. Believe me, I'm scared of FPGAs and I got one. Uh, so it's uh, it's something you, you're going to take a risk on. But here in the future, I can definitely see the potential. And from what I've seen behind the scenes, the things I can't tell you about, um, I can tell you that a lot is coming down the line. So what's the next step? Well, I got one of these. Yes, that's uh, it's not enough to buy two 
EK cooling systems in addition to the one that I got or the two of them that I got in this uh, in this system right here. That's a lot of that's a lot of money in EK water cooling systems. Uh, if you saw my other video about slow flow, about the tool water block that I got for the FPGA, about the flow rate being very very restrictive through there, it seems to be an issue. I've seen maybe a couple other people talk about the uh, the slow flow through the tool water block. That's because the fins in the block itself are very very tiny. It's not a lot of room for the water to get through, and they need to make it that way because uh, they need to carry a lot of heat through and so they make the fin smaller increases the surface area it carries more away uh, the big problem is is that the uh, the EK pump that I got was not sufficient and it, when I looked on the, the website for FPGA.guide I didn't see any recommendations on the pump or how much power that they recommended would needed what that you would need in order to force enough liquid through the block so um, I just assumed that an EK pump is a good quality pump it should be it should be working uh, just fine for that it sadly is not so I went ahead and bought one of these this is a coolant system this uh, should be the final solution <laughs> for my cooling problems so once we get that in we're going to use that chiefly as our main uh, cooling rig in order to force enough liquid through that water block in order to get the temperatures down uh, if like I said earlier you, if you're going to get an FPGA a, v a VCU or a BCU you absolutely have to explore liquid cooling or immersion cooling uh, doing it with forced air is not going to be sufficient. You can get by running some bit streams, but you're not going to be able to achieve the hash rates that are uh, that this thing is capable of. And you put all this money into an FPGA. Does it not make sense for you to put in more to achieve those insane hash rates? I think it does. So know that going in that once you buy the card, it's not like a GPU. That's not the final uh, the final stop. You got to get sufficient cooling for these things. So I'm going to report back as soon as I get the coolant system in. I'm going to put the tool water block back on the card with the stock back plate from squirrel uh, under advisement from GPU Hoarder, he said that would should be okay. Uh, I'm going to use the stock back plate to attach the tool water block. I'm going to slap in the coolant system. Hopefully that forces enough through, and I can bring and keep those temperatures way down and run some of those extreme hash rates. Um, I'm going to report back on my testing because obviously a lot of people are here for FPGA content, and I want to deliver it to you. But that's my FPGA situation report right now. Stay tuned for more updates on the uh, on the coolant system and how we can bring those temperatures down. I'm very glad to have the BCU in house for replacement for the VCU. I've been without an FPGA for so long, it's a lot of money to be uh, to be absent. So stay tuned there. If you're new to the channel, please please be sure to subscribe because I, uh, I like to deliver content on this stuff. If you like this video, or at least the direction of this video, please consider leaving me a thumbs up. And if you dislike this video, please consider leaving me a thumbs up. Check links in the description below for everything we talked about here today. Check out our Discord. Just type discord.thetechnicals.io into your browser. It takes you straight into our Discord. Also hit me up on Twitter. I'm at the Technicals. Once again, I'm the Technicals. See you next time. Thank you